This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. everybody and welcome to Dubai. It's one of the best known cities in the Middle East and part of the United Arab Emirates. Originally known as a harbour town, trading goods at the various souks, nowadays visitors are more likely to be tourists coming to the bright modern malls as much as the Burj Khalifa and the Burj Al Arabs or those traditional river rides on the Dow as well as the museums that honour the history of old. There's been competition here for centuries. Camel racing still takes place, but it's for a different kind of event that we've flown to the Emirates. We're here at the uh, Dubai Autodrome. It's the first weekend of uh, 2018. And uh, we're here for the first round of the Champion of the Continent season 2018 of the 24-hour Proto Series, the three times three hours of Dubai. The Creventing organized endurance series has history at the Dubai Autodrome going back to 2006. In 2017, a new initiative started as Dubai was the opening round for the 24-hour prototype endurance series powered by Hankook. This FIA Pro Series continues in 2018 and it's where P2, P3 and CN cars combine and race at tracks on three continents. The championship of the continents was already in state in the 24-hour series last year, only for GT and touring cars. This year new, we also have it for the prototypes available, with a, a triple header of three-hour races uh, here in Dubai. Also three times three-hour races in Portimao in July, and uh, it ends on, in America, on the circuit of the Americas in uh, November, also with a three times three-hours race. This is the 14th year that Creventic have raced here in Dubai and compared to when the first event was organised, it's clear that the Emirates have changed their attitude towards motorsports. Up to 2004, we never had a circuit. We had always rallying. Now, before motorsport was rallying, now rallying is part of motorsport. I think racing will, will slowly catch on. Uh, we used to be the same, we used to like street cars when we were younger and uh, if you really like cars, these are the ultimate uh, you can get to. But it's not just the locals who are competing here. This is the ideal place for racing enthusiasts to start the 2018 season. Because it's a race for the LMP3 that probably is one of the categories that is growing up uh, more fast in the last times. We love to come here because it's good start at the beginning of the year uh, uh, so we can train, we can uh, enjoy the sun and uh, we don't have problem with the rain here and uh, we love the track, it's a very good track. Uh, we believe in prototype racing and um, we can be not thankful enough for um, all the drivers and teams that made it out here for uh, this weekend to um, join us for this experience, for this endeavor together, as these are the people that make us be proud of our jobs. Friday is qualifying. Two cars didn't manage to run in the session. Number four ran into trouble during the free practice session earlier in the day. Run the braking into turn three and they had a suspension, suspension failed and they lost the long brake pedal and basically the suspension removed itself from the car. Um, so therefore, it's just not possible to get the car out. But the team have worked out a solution for some of their drivers. Um, it's possible that one of the factory drivers may step down from one of the other cars and one of the other drivers may come back in and then the other drivers, I think, will go ahead with doing the Silverstone race in March. So this is also endurance. The other car not running in qualifying, the 177 Radical, their issues not terminal. We had a leak in the differential. It was a minor leak, so we could have done qualifying and then fixed it. But we decided just to stay safe because uh, 
Already all the cars here are faster than us. We would not have a chance of moving up the grid. Paul in CN1 class for the 98 Norma. A great start to their weekend. Yes, it was a good qualification, but uh, we have to, to wait for the races because three races or three hours, it's very long. So it's not so important, the qualifying session. Paul in P3, the number 22 of Speedworks. Yeah, it was good. Went out first, then uh, just hooked all my laps up together and managed to get a pretty good time, I think, of uh, 30, uh, 53 four. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. First time here as well, so yeah, I can't complain with it. Qualifying showing it's going to be an exciting race with the top three really close to each other in time. We did three uh, third overall and P2 uh, in LMP3. <coughs> only, um, only 38 uh, thousands of a seconds from the pole position and uh, we will see, I mean, anything can happen in the race. Starting from Paul, Jordan Sanders. He was supposed to race in the damaged number four car, but has been switched to the number six Ginetta of Simpson Motorsport. No, I'm very thankful for Ginetta and Mike for letting me step into this car and for, of course, Neil Muston and John Corbett for allowing me to step in. Uh, it's a good opportunity and great to be back at this circuit for a second year running. And next week we will have the 24 hours uh, of Dubai, also uh, powered by Hankook. And we are looking forward to a starting grid of uh, about 90 cars, GT and touring cars. But uh, this weekend we already got the prototypes racing. We're right now on the start of the first race of uh, the three races. And uh, we're looking very much forward to the competition. And uh, wish the drivers a lot of fun and a safe race. Two warm-up laps completed, the pace car is off the circuit and we're about to start the first of three three-hour races at the Hankook 3x3 three three hours of Dubai. The lights are out and the prototype cars have started their 540 minutes of competition divided over three races. No one is waiting for the last minutes to make their move. John Corbett quick to take advantage of his pull. Behind him a battle for second between Jack Patel in the number 22 and Giacomo Puccini in the 44 Ligier which started from fourth. Yeah, the start was great. I mean, the, the, the car, it's very, very, you know, reactive and immediately I thought it took longer to warm up the tyre because this is the biggest problem with the eaters but uh, it was immediately very fast and I understood that I had to pass immediately the P2, the P2 in front of me, that is the one the other car did. So I tried my best and it comes out and so I could keep my pace and do the first stint in a, in a proper way, let's say. So it was, was a good start. Yeah, it was a, an interesting start. I um, went to go off and as I went off, I hit the limiter in second. So yeah, I backed off a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, just carried on going, had the two cars behind um, and just tried to do the best I could to, to make sure they didn't get past. So one of them got alongside me going into turn one. I managed to just get down the inside and, and keep him behind. And then uh, a couple of laps later, I managed to get down the inside of the P2 car and, and just pulled away from there. The Simpson Motorsport Genetta G57 number six put a few car lengths between themselves and the rest of the field, but that was not going to last long. Green light, uh, got a great start kind of uh, yeah got got some nice acceleration off the start the guy next to me kind of uh, was too busy looking at me and uh, messed something up so I got a bit of jump on the lad uh, didn't last for long though it was it was a great first lap I'll be showing everybody at home my first one and a half laps and uh, at that point in time the young lad went past me and uh, yeah I kind of tried to hang off the back of him for a while when I got past him I was a bit like mm, okay he's gonna gonna come up sooner or later and then I just start putting away the team tell me yeah, you're doing a second a lap quicker and I was just keep pushing, pushing, pushing and yeah, ended up getting a really good lead. Let's have another look at the start of the race. Triton Glenn Dubis on the left side of the picture has to brake hard in the first metres of the race and locks up his tyres. That hard stop now brings the car back to the pit lane. I locked uh, the wheels and uh, had the flat spot on one of the front tyres. And, uh, you know, I drove like 15 minutes like that. The car had terrible vibration. I couldn't drive anymore. So I had to come back to change the front tires. The 48 Ligier was fitted with new tires, but the car couldn't leave the pit box as quickly as they might have wanted. That lost them even more time. No tire warmers in the Hankook Endurance Series. So the spirit of race car now had cold fronts and warm rears. And that gave more issues for the driver. I went on the dirt and... Uh, I tried to go 
quickly too fast and I had still dirt, so I spun again and then we had a problem with the starter. I couldn't start the car. It was not my fault because there was a problem with the starter and uh, we lost a lot of time. Then there was code 60 because I couldn't start the car again. The result in code 60 used by the overall leader to come to the pits. We, we came in and pitted for fuel under the code 60. Uh, I think it was the best um, thing to do in that situation. So Giacomo Pacini takes over the lead. After the, the Fulcus yellow, he went to the pit and then remained out, so that's why I was in first position. But I mean, the stint was good, the car was reacting very well. Uh, the team did a very good job. It's my first stint with LM LMP3. As you say, I'm trying to recover from it, but uh, the car, it's, uh, it's very nice to drive and the team prepared it properly. Back to green flag racing, at the top of the field are out of sync on their pit stops, which just makes it all more exciting. The 48 Ligier was recovered to their pits and quickly restarted. In this race, there's a variety of prototypes, which gives a constant battle. The first regular pit stop after nearly an hour of racing is for the number six Simpson Ginetta. John didn't have a flawless end to his stint. I had a bit of a uh, misfortune. Uh, I had a bit of a spin there at uh, whatever turn it is and uh, lost about seven seconds, so it's not the end of the world. Make sure it does a 360 and keeps going in the direction it should be. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky track, this one, that's for sure. With the six in for service, let's take a look at the standings. 60 minutes of racing completed. The 44 P3 Ligier, Graf Motorsports, leading by a full lap. They've yet to make their pit stop. The 22 Ligier of Speedworks Motorsport is second. The 98 Craft Racing Norma is on the same lap and holds third. Fourth overall, the number six Ginetta G57 of Simpson Motorsport, the only entry in the P2 class. As soon as they finish their pit stop, they'll be out battling the P3 and CN1 cars again. In P3, the number 44 of Graf is leading at the moment. Second is the number 22 from Speedworks and seven laps down, the 48th Spirit of Race Ligier. This is endurance. Achievement comes in the members of the drivers, competitors, and also the staff and the volunteers with us. I am a motorsports enthusiast, and this is something special for us to have this 24 hour series. This is the second time we're having this uh, three hours into three hours. Yeah, it's endurance. We enjoy it. This is the Dubai Autodrome, a track that is indelibly linked to the history of Creventic. And it's loved by everyone that's ever been here. Dubai Autodrome is a, is a very modern facility, instated in 2006. Uh, we have been here for 13 years now. And um, we, we always uh, love to come back here. The cooperation with the Dubai Autodrome staff is uh, fantastic. And uh, together with our partner, the Dutch National Racing Team, and uh, the staff of Dubai Autodrome, we always manage to, to uh, make our events uh, successful. I think it's just because it's Dubai and how it's been set up and the history behind it. I think everything just makes it. So, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's good. And to get the pole, I mean, what else could you want on a first time out? So, yeah. So, I mean, uh, the, the first part, it's, it's, it's amazing because it's really fast, it's technical. So, the first corner, uh, it's really nice. And then you have this section which, on new tyres, it's quite easy flat, I would say. But then during the race, with the full tank, start to be really challenging. And then there is the braking for Tour 5, Turn 6, which is really, really, really difficult. All the track is very technical, but for sure, the part that I prefer is the first one. Uh, in the trajectory, the track is clean. When you exit from the track, from the trajectory, the correct trajectory, there is a sand and the, the, the car is slippery. And not just the drivers have taken a liking to this track, also the mechanics. It's a lot of high speed stuff, um, under a lot of stress. Um, quite a lot of high speed corners, so it's all, it puts a lot of stress on the cars and especially it's dry conditions as well. So it's not like you're in the wet where it's slower you've got a lot more chance of reliability in the rain because you've got less stress but as a mechanic it's nicer to be dry and in the warm so yeah that's better back in the race no one is writing the headlines right now all the cars still in the running two hours to go in this first of three races this weekend time for more stops but the 44 has problems leaving the graph pit after its service 
Yeah. He ate the we eat on the starter because it has a little bit of uh, heating and he wouldn't start anymore. So it happens sometimes. After an hour and a half, the early race leader comes back to the pit lane for a driver change and a top up of fuel. The 22 Ligier made its first pit stop during the Code 60, remember? That meant they extended the stint for Jack Patel. Never driven it for an hour and a half before, so just knowing how and what the car's going to do after an hour and a half was a, a new territory for me. But yeah, we did well. Um, the team did phenomenal with, with the car. Kai Van Berlo has taken over the wheel of the black and red Ligier number 22, but he wasn't able to join the race properly. We ended up going for fuel and then uh, found out we lost drive, we lost throttle. Um, and found out now we, we, we broke a drive shaft. Speedworks Motorsport took quite a bit of time with repairs on the number 22 before Kai Van Berlo rejoined the track. Daniel Kerman into the pits for a driver change. He's handing his car over to his son. The car felt a little different than he expected. Condition from the car wasn't good, but not the same car as they did in the morning. I think a very. Um, uh, de la gomme, de la gomme. Uh, Warm the, the tires and um, well, a lot of vibration. But I think tomorrow it will, it will be better. The AUH Radical also in for a driver change. We're doing really well. We started from the back of the grid. Uh, we're in fourth place overall right now. And uh, second in class. Uh, we're just uh, trying to put in, put in consistent laps. No mistakes, no problems in the pit stops. And uh, it's looking like it's, uh, it's paying off. After some frantic work from the team, the Speedworks Motorsport Ligier is back on the track. Yeah, I was out for 30 minutes. The team did a great job to bring it out again. They fixed the car. I went out and there was a lot of pickup on the tyres. But after the pickup was gone, everything felt really good. I felt confident in the car and yeah, we did a, we did a great stint, I think. But Kai couldn't enjoy full speed racing from the word go, as code 60 was called again. Avant la ligne droite, en fait, dans la descente, uh, quand j'ai passé le quatrième rapport, et, yeah, it was it was on the before the before the paddock line, the, the straight line, uh, when he put the four uh, gear, uh, the motor cut and uh, the alarm uh, was uh, lightning, and then. Uh, he has no power and the, the engine cut and the problem is that uh, we have the oil pump, the plastic uh, wheel uh, broke and then the engine broke. This was the end of the race for the number 97 Norma. The race is drawing to a close and after nearly three hours of competition, the Graf number 44 P3 is leading with the Simpson number six from the P2 class closing in. <laughs> it is, yeah, like three hours of racing and it comes down to this so um it's this is quality this is uh for, for a grid of um small number of cars it's fantastic that it's come down it's, it's a bit of fun less than five minutes before the checkered flag jordan sanders in the number six janetta takes the lead three hours of endurance racing is completed and the overall win goes to simpson motorsport and then number six janetta it was marginal um, under the code 60 about 30 minutes to go I had had my engineer just constantly reading off the gap from there until the end it's like 26 seconds 23 seconds 20 seconds so I was pushing as hard as I could and we managed to get it two or three laps from the end so. Michael Bronaszewski tried hard to keep the lead but in the end was just pipped yeah very close very close but we double steam with these tires we lost a little bit I cannot push on the end I don't have the tires that was our problem we didn't try double steam with these tyres. We make some modification, but it'll be before the race, maybe too much. And un peu de français from a very pleased Marc Vive. Très 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 content parce qu'on a quand même la plus petite voiture du plateau. On s'en est bien sorti par la régularité. Vraiment, on s'est fait plaisir. Un circuit magnifique, une organisation au top. Donc, euh, vivement que ça recommence, quoi. Vraiment, vraiment top. Ouais, good race. Yeah. It's a very good race. <laughs> We're very happy to see three different classes on the overall podium, especially for the CN car. It's a really big achievement uh, to compete against uh, cars that have much more power to be on the overall uh, podium after all. Heading to the top step of the podium, Jordan Sanders, only able to race this car because Mike Simpson was willing to relinquish his seat. Thank you very much, Mike, uh, for giving up your seat. Yeah, I can't, can't say thank you enough. Yeah, thanks to all the guys at Janetta and all, all the ones at Simpson as well. We had four brands of cars in the field, three of them are represented in the overall top three. 
The Janetta of Simpson Motorsport had a 100 second lead over the Ligier number 44 of Graf and one lap further back, the Kraft Racing number 98. Three different brands on the podium and all the three classes too. In the class battles, the overall winner, a sole entrant in P2, takes the win there. In P3, the class honours go to the 44 from Graf. Second, the 48 Spirit of Race. Third, the number 22 of Speedworks Motorsport. All three of those cars, Ligier JS P3s. And in the CN1 class, top step reserved for Kraft Racing. They take the trophy back to France thanks to their number 98 Norma M20. Second in class locals AUH Motorsport with their Radical SR3 number 177. And the Kraft Racing number 97 finishes this first race third in class. Drivers and teams have come from all over the world to gather here in Dubai for endurance racing at the start of the year. Sprint races get a lot of major attention, but everyone here knows the appeal of the Kravetnik organised endurance series. Look, I guess if you're 21, you can be doing sprint races, but coming in and doing uh, doing an hour stint, hour and a half stint, that's what it's all about. And uh, I think if you've been driving a few years, you want to be doing this sort of thing where you can um, just get into a groove. And I, I, I love doing these things. Like, you're going around and you're doing within a 0.1.2 every lap and you're just doing your best and you're just trying to improve every lap, trying not to make mistakes and there's little bits of, uh, of the circuit where you're just thinking to yourself every lap, I'm just going to go a little deeper or break a little harder or uh, turn a little tighter and you just do that and you pick up a tenth or two. So that's really what ra uh, endurance racing is about. You have to, to work with your other drivers and uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting opportunity uh, to meet some other drivers and to have uh, very good races and to test endurance too. So it's, a, it's an adventure with all the craft racing and it's a very good team. I'm just doing, doing motorsports because I enjoy it. It's always a, a fun time at the circuit on the weekends and fun being with the drivers and being with the mechanics. It's just a, like a little family and yeah, it's just, just fun fun to be out here and, and, and go racing. You could be sitting at work um, doing uh, mundane stuff or you could be here racing in a racetrack. I'd know what I'd rather do. Well, no office work is here on Saturday morning. We're getting ready for the first of the two races today. This race will uh, start at 9 in the morning and uh, go on until 12. We've got half an hour park for me then. And um, at 2 o'clock, it's again start grid for the last race uh, of this event starting at 3 o'clock, lasting until 6 p.m. And um, well, it, it is a tight schedule for the teams uh, in between, but uh, we're confident we gave them enough space to uh, fix possible issues between the two races. Deemed not able to compete this weekend is back, thanks to Janetta, who provided remote assistance from Yorkshire in the UK. I did a, a composite repair on the, on the front right-hand corner uh, to the tub. Um, which means uh, that now we can officially go back out, uh, depending on what the scrutineers say. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a big job. Um, they worked hard sort of from late afternoon all the way through into the evening. Um, so hopefully it holds up and, and we can get back to sort of on the pace and, and hopefully get some good podium results. Whether the car can race or not will be decided by the scrutineering team. Yeah, the car had uh, yesterday accident and we uh, checked the car that, that it's all okay what what they changed on, on parts. It's, it's the, the, the safety uh, first, yes. Uh, we, we must look up, up they do the, the, the work ready. The scrutineers satisfied the repairs have been done safely and will allow the car to start the second race of the weekend from the pit lane. Their sister car is on pole. Well, obviously we're leading from the front, so we need to keep an eye on what everyone else is doing. So we'll probably base our strategy loosely based on what everyone else is doing. So when, you know, we'll always obviously try and gain an advantage if there's code 60s. Um, but at the end of the day, we run our own strategy. You know, we, can, we, we use so much fuel, so we're limited as to when we can stop. So we don't worry too much about it. The warm-up laps underway. The marshals have spotted one of the teams have left their laptop on the track. Marshal Jerome Yosef runs to the laptop and takes it from the track before it gets destroyed or can do harm to cars or drivers. Gives it to the race director Martin van Pevet, who's now convinced this race can start safely. The pace car is off the track and the P2s, P3s and CN cars are ready to start the second race in this FIA approved Hankook 3x3 hours of Dubai. It was quite windy overnight and these are the first cars to race today. 
Think back to last October in the Hankook 2 by five hours of Spa Francorchamps. These cars were trailing a cloud of rainwater behind them. Now they're trailing a cloud of sand. The early metres of the race full of battles. That means not everyone have got their best start. I have some problem at the, at the start because uh, some cars was behind me and they was fighting and I cannot pass because it was too dangerous. Don't want to have some problem with the car at the beginning because uh, endurance is long. So we have to think about it, but uh, it was good. Yeah. yeah, the lights go off. I was a bit too fast away. Got a 10 second penalty for it. But anyway, uh, the first lap was really exciting. I was pushing yeah, to the limits and overtaking as much as possible. All action at the front of the field as Charlie Robertson joining the race from pit lane. We, we went to fuel before the race and we started uh, from the fuel station effectively, uh, waiting on the, the light to go green after everyone had passed. The way I kind of approached it, I thought, do you know what, everyone will be fighting on the first two laps, everyone will be very close, so this is my opportunity to push and catch them. So I pushed quite hard straight away, managed to catch the back of the train and then really just like pick them off one by one. Neil Muston not able to defend the lead. Yeah, it feels good. The team was saying over the radio, everybody was crazy in the pit box, so really, yeah, really good. It's good to see a lot of new drivers coming to this championship. Uh, that's what we want to see. So, um, you know, we, we as Janetta want good, uh, good competitive racing and uh, to have some quick drivers, especially if it's her first time, it's fantastic, so. Now the battle for second. This is being it was so long be behind P2, which was much faster on the straight, we lost a lot of time because uh, in, in the corners I was faster, but every time uh, there was no chance on the braking, too, too risky to overtake him, and we lost too, too, too much. Charlie Robertson is working his way forward. A lot of the cars are quite a lot slower than what, what I was lapping, so it wasn't too difficult. I just had to be sensible and not take any unnecessary risks. It's a three-hour race. We knew we have time on our side, so I didn't do anything silly. I just kept my head, made one, one overtake at a time. The comeback almost complete as the number four Simpson Ginetta overtakes the number six, his teammate. That second position overall. Uh, well, I knew that was hap going to happen. Like Charlie's, uh, you know, top-notch uh, pro, so he was always going to go past. And sure enough. Kai Van Berlo has to give up the lead to Mike Simpson and immediately Mike extends his advantage. Away from the scrap at the front of the field, remember there are three classes, the P2, the P3 and the CN1 categories. And those finished positions in class are important for the championship. Races to come in Portugal and the USA. After about an hour of racing, we start to see the pit stops for most of the cars, not all. We do only two refueling, not three. So that means we earn time for the refueling. And uh, I think uh, if we don't have mechanical problems, we can expect to finish three or four in the general race. One third of the race completed. Let's take a look at the standings. Kai Van Berlo is back in the lead, but hasn't taken his first pit stop yet. The competition are already fueled up and have changed their drivers, but for now, the 22 Speedworks Ligier can brag about a full lap lead over the field. Second and third, the two Simpson Ginettas, four and six, just like the rest of the top six, all on the same lap. In P3, it's the 22 of Speedworks also leading there, of course. One lap down is the graph number 44. Third, the 48 Spirit of Race, but they are the only P3 car that have already taken their pit stop. In the CN1 class, Kraft Racing's 98 and 97 Normas, 20 seconds apart in first and second, and two laps back in third is the AUH Radical number 177. This is endurance. I like a lot this race. It's my first, uh, second time uh, when I'm doing this. I did it just last year here in Dubai as well, preventing three hours, uh, three times. I like a lot the, the format of this race because it's kind of endurance, but at the same time have uh, three starts, you know, three just different lives, you know, during one just racing weekend. I like a lot this, this race. So that's my feeling. For 2018, a new pit safety measure has been introduced by Creventic. We added uh, an extra team member that is possible to be around the car with wearing a green tablet, who is assisting the driver to get out of the car and helping the new driver to get into the car. Uh, we did this because it, in the previous times we allowed the driver to perform this change, so the new driver helping the previous one, the previous one having the um, or, uh, new driver. Um, but of course, after a two-hour stint, this can lead 
to tiredness of, of the previous driver sitting into a car. And as it is a safety issue, we believe it's, it's safer if someone um, who has not uh, just had a two-hour stint is um, uh, helping the new driver to fasten the seatbelt. After all, it's about safety. And um, it's still possible for the drivers to uh, do this, but uh, we want to give teams the opportunity to uh, choose for this uh, newer and uh, in our opinion a safer solution so if the team opts to have a driver assistance the only thing to decide is who is going to wear that green tabard for me this weekend it's it's i'm leaving my engineers to engineer and if they're working on fuel calculations it's easier if i can just relieve them of doing driver change duties because creventic have brought in a new rule now where drivers can do this we can now have an assistant and we hadn't really scheduled for a driver assistant because we normally let them do it themselves and so, as I was kind of a free body, that was uh, my job. It's new to the teams, but they do appreciate it. I think it's a good, it's a good system because the driver gets out of the car after a two-hour stint. He's very tired and working in the cockpit to do cut the belts up. You know, he's quite tired. He's out of the car. He wants to go and get some water and sit down for five minutes. So having another person to do it is a good idea. The Speedworks Motorsport 22 has taken its first pit stop now. A CN car now leads the pack. Yes, yes, because uh, we can uh, race a little bit uh, with our fuel, so we can make like 10 minutes more or something like that in our stint, and that's why we can be first at the end of the stint. The last car to take its stop, the 97 Kraft Norma, due to come in. David Cristini has had the longest stint of the race till now, but as he comes in, the slight damage on the car. The SR3 car he didn't see me, so he pushed me. I was outside the, uh, the track, and I see the panel 100, and I have to, to be between the car and between the panel, and I, I, fight a little, I, I, I cut a little bit of the panel 100. But it's polystyrene. No, no damage, no damage. It's okay. The CN cars have just taken their first pit stop, as the P2s and P3s are already due for their second. Yeah, my, my stint was better than yesterday because yesterday was a disaster for me. I spun two times, so I was a bit cautious, but it was better. I, I can still do much better. I hope the afternoon I will be much faster. Mohamed Al Hassawi did get reacquainted with racing radicals. It's been a long time uh, since the last race I raced in the radicals. And yeah, it's nice. It's coming back slowly. <laughs> Going well in the second leg of the race, Rui Aguash in the number 48 Ligier. Then trouble strikes. With Rui, we were rising up the classification. Uh, he told there was a small problem in the car. The uh, got fixed during the his stint. But according to what the driver said, we prepare different things to to be changing case. And now it seems uh, it seems they are the. They are fixing. It was one of the things we prepared, and uh, probably in a short time the car will start again. Jack Patel in the Speedworks 22, trying to take the position from the Graf 44. He is doing very well, considering he wasn't very well um, before Christmas. Um, he had a 13-week sick period where he was in hospital for a while. So, but he's got full clearance by the doctors, and um, he's doing better than I thought he would. Still leading the Simpson number four Janetta. Remember, this car didn't even start yesterday. Their sister car, the number six, is second overall. This makes a team manager very happy. Today, the two cars running is a lot better than having one car not run yesterday after the substantial damage we repaired yesterday morning. So it's good to be now running one and two, and hopefully we can hold it together for the last 15 minutes of the race. In the CN class, the battle between the 97 and 98 Kraft Normas is getting tighter and tighter. Uh, the feeling of the two races is quite good. On the 98, we make two fantastic races. First one, we finish P3 overall. Now we are fighting for the lead in CN. So that's nice, quite nice. But the 98 has collected a penalty, and that will affect its finishing results. There will be 10 second penalty on the 98, so at final, we cannot do anything. So. That will be a nice race at the end, but nothing interesting. After three hours of racing, it's the number four of Simpson Motorsport who is first to take the chequered flag. Great photo opportunity crossing the line with the sister car. And the Kraft teammates also side by sides towards that chequered flag. Yes, if we finish just uh, 13 TCM uh, before, the, before the other car, before the 98. So it was very short. We, we, they passed the line quietly about, uh, I think, uh, 50 centimetre difference. 
team manager said, be together, but don't, uh, don't make mistakes. It's not only drivers that make mistakes. And when a team makes an error, that can cost positions. We made a mistake, actually. We didn't know that my driving time limit was one and a half hour. So I spent two hours in the car and uh, yeah, we got, a, we got a penalty. Anyway, the strategy was not the best today because with the temperature that we had, we tried to do a double stint on the tires, but after uh, one hour and 15, one hour and 20 minutes, it was completely gone. So it was, was really tough to get to the end and also no sense for that. The top three are at the podium for the awards ceremony. Jack Patel not able to hold on a second, but still happy. Yeah, I know, it was good. The uh, Trying to hold it off was a bit, a bit of a battle, but I mean, that's what we're here to do, is try to get as high as we can and try to defend off these P2s, but they've just got so much pace, it's just unreal. It took a bit of time to get past uh, the P3 car. It's a bit quicker down the straights today, but um, yeah, did it in the end and then managed to pull away and then wanted a photo finish, so Mike caught up with us. That was good. What a wonderful sight and to go across the line side by side. It's it's well worth the effort. You know, yesterday was difficult for Ginetta. We uh, we we thought the car we, we should retire it, but the Ginetta spirit we we tried to fix it with uh, with Simpson and uh, you know the Ginetta guys back at base here and Simpson did a great job and and Simon. I mean, what a superstar! Never been here before. Come to Dubai and proper times, proper times. One more race to go, but here's the results of race two. Simpson Motorsport Ginetta's exactly a lap apart. 90 laps for the number four, 89 for the number six sister car. The number 22 Speedworks Motorsport Leisure in third after three hours, just 16 seconds between the P3 and the P2 cars ahead. In the class standings, the same result in P2 as the overall with Simpson Motorsports number four and six showing great pace and reliability. In P3, it's the Leisure JS cars. Speedworks Motorsport number 22, dominant in class all race long, takes the top step. Graf 44, very proud to be second, with the 48 Spirit of Race in third. The CN1 class was dominated once again by the Norma M20 FCs. The Graf 97 wins it, with their teammates, the 98, by their side on the podium. Third in class, the Radical SR3 RSX of AUH Motorsport. There's variety in the Hankook 3x3 hours of Dubai, with Norma, Radical, Ligier and Ginetta all represented. Some drivers with experience of their cars, others are fresh to motor racing. It's the LMP3 car, it's, uh, it's the Le Mans prototype car. Um, I've never driven it before, I'm straight out from karting, so this is my first race in, uh, in a prototype car. You really don't need to have the fastest car on the track to enjoy the racing. It's fun to drive. Like uh, I, actually, I didn't drive the other cars, but it's very nice to drive, and it's fast for uh, for a small car like like it. You don't even have to be the driver to love being here. Ah, it's very fun. It's very fun, especially on uh, that kind of event. There is a, a lot of uh, driving time. The drivers are. Very are great to work with. Walk on the, that, that car, that kind of car, technically, it's great. It's very fun. Yeah, this is endurance. The P2 and P3 classes have been particularly close. At the end of the last race, just 16 seconds between them. Last year, different pit stop times for the different classes were used to balance the performance of the cars. That's changed for 2018. This year we decided to um, let the teams fight out uh, the battle on track. There are very little BOP limitations for all, all the teams. Most of the weights are according to their homologation weight, um, the refueling amount is set to their fuel capacity. So, so actually, this is a racing at its purest, you could say. The first race we saw three different classes on the, on the podium. And uh, now let's see what's uh, up ahead for the third race uh, of this weekend. And another change in the driver lineup at Simpson. Jordan Sanders and Mike Simpson were sharing the car last race, but now they're competitors. Obviously, things have changed from last race again, so we've mixed the drivers around again. So it's myself, Charlie Robertson, and Simon Murray. Um, so we've got a strong lineup. We'll, we'll see what we can do in the race. Yeah, and I qualified with Neil and John, and um, you know, it wasn't really fair to have two, you know, Ginetta factory drivers in the same car. So um, you know, we agreed to, uh, to to move cars again. A bit more of a challenge for Jordan and I because we're swapping around, but then you know that's. That's what we're here to do, isn't it? So um, yeah, we'll have a good race and hopefully put on a show. I hope to, to, to do better than this morning. <laughs> this morning we had uh, a problem with the tyres, with uh, the wheel, and uh, 
<clears throat> we lost uh, five, six uh, laps. The moment Michael will take the start and then we see during the race uh, how does it feel physically with the tyres and everything and then concerning to this then we will decide the strategy. I will try to do the same as first, as second race and we will see how we end up. Five red lights above the track. When they go out, the racing starts. The number four car as winner of this morning's race starts from pole position, but it's the number six, their sister car, that takes the lead before we even get to the first corner. Good start, now we got the lead and um, steadily pulled away from Jordan, which was great. Very different circuit to this morning. Um, tracks got much hotter and the wind has picked up and it's become very dusty. So I was probably three seconds, well, two and a half, three seconds a lap slower than I was this morning. I, I just had a lack of grip. So Mike pulled away uh, six, seven seconds in the first couple of laps, which, yeah, he's better at warming the tyres up. My tyres weren't quite warm. Um, and then I managed to sort of maintain the gap so he was pulling away only a little bit, which I, I did better than I expected, basically. I thought he was going to pull away probably like half a second a lap or something. Um, but no, it was literally just a couple of tenths, uh, you know, a tenth or something a lap, and then I'd get a tenth back the next lap. So it was, it was positive. In the first two races, Jordan was racing in the number six car, but now he's back in the car he was meant to race. Four feels nicer in my opinion, but mainly I think the seat because I have my own seat made for the four before we came here and then I was using a seat just any seat that kind of fit me that could fit in the other gent seats in the six so yeah being back in the four being in my own seat made you know the Aston a, a lot easier than the other two races to perform at your best you need confidence in your car last year Max Bortolami had a broken engine he had the same problem at the first race this weekend he's keen not to make it three in a row and brings the car in as soon as he feels something is off. Max uh, uh, had a special feeling in the car and thinks that something was broken, so we opened the, the car and we check it, but everything was okay. I think he was a little bit uh, crazy about the uh, risk of broken the engine because two times, so I think he was scared about this. Six minutes lost in the pits, but Max can confidently rejoin the race. The three races in the Hankook 3x3 three three hours of Dubai are not exactly the same. Track and weather conditions can be different, so you can't attack the track in the same way as you did before. It was different in the back straight, actually, also on the, in the main straight. You can break a little bit later than uh, uh, when the wind is, because it was the, on the opposite side. And in the back, back straight, you have to break a little bit earlier, so uh, you don't lock or anything. And also the temperature, the, in Dubai the circuit gets hotter and hotter as the day goes on. And we saw it yesterday, the lap times dropped two or three seconds around mid to late afternoon. So it's, it's the nature of this circuit, this asphalt, the tyre, um, that, that, you know, it likes to be cold, the tyre and the circuit. The fine desert sand could damage the engines, but teams know this and have taken measures to prevent it. Well, we have the filters and everything, um, but, but no, it's, it's not that bad. Um, once the cars have done some laps, it, you can clear it, but if you go offline to overtake, there is a lot of sand. Um, for the 24-hour next week, if the wind picks up, there could be um, you know, a lot of sand getting blown around. So. The drivers still finding their feet in this first hour of the race, so let's take a look at the standings before the race heats up towards the finish. 60 minutes in, and the P2 entries of Simpson Motorsport have held on to the lead that they took at the start. The number four entry has a lap on the number six car, second overall. The P2 class Speedworks Motorsport number 22 is 57 seconds behind in third. In the CN1 class, it's the Kraft Racing number 98 that holds a comfortable three lap lead. Both the 177 AUH Radical and the Kraft number 97 Norma have already had their pit stop and are just one sixth of a second apart. And in the intermediate standings, the two race leaders, both in the P2 class, of course. Number six, Simpson Motorsport, has done 30 laps, one lap more, set by the number four, Ginetta. This is Endurance. Oh, my word, that was nerve-wracking. Watching on the TV, hoping he didn't get tangled. Uh, and that he did a fantastic job. Oh, very nervous, very, very nervous. Um, you know, it's probably harder in here standing and waiting what's going on, what's going on. Um, but no, he's better off in the car than I am.
fabulous weather for racing in Dubai in January, but that's not the only reason teams and drivers are here. They love the organisers as well. I love the Kravenik uh, races. Uh, they're so thoughtful, you know, like three three-hour races. How, how much track time? Five hours of practice, you know, like that. There's no other. There's no other event where you can do that. So we just need to get a few more people on the grids, and I'd be happy as Larry to come here for every basically sign up for the season. Yes, I, I really enjoy now the the prototype event, and then next week the the 24-hour event. Um, we are going to also do a little bits and pieces there. And uh, the Creventic events are always a very great organized event, and it's good good fun to be here. Yeah, they organize, they do a nice series, nice events. You get to drive a lot, which is, which is nice. It's a pity that we didn't have so many competitors. I think last year there were around 20 cars. Still good fun. It's the first time I tried it. I really like it. It's really organized. The Proto Series is new and people need time to start getting into it. So I hope it grows. And I hope we can make more races uh, with Kravantik. Into the second hour of the final race of the weekend, the Radical 177 ahead of the number 22 Norma. And that's made this AUH driver very happy. It was a really good stint. Uh, we were actually catching one of the Normas on track. And uh, that's quite a surprise because these cars are much faster than us. Maybe the guy had a problem with the car or maybe he was just new to it. Uh, I was, I was uh, behind him for maybe 10 laps, but catching up. And usually they would just disappear in two corners after passing us. So uh, it felt good. It's not 24 hours, but these three by three hour races are still taxing. Oh, yeah, a little bit uh, tired. Uh, it's long, but uh, we have uh, lots of problems today. Problem of strategy, problem of engine, but then it's okay. And problem of the, the fuel refueling, we wait uh, 10 or 20 seconds, so it was a bad day. I think I will drive in uh, about 20 minutes, in about 20 minutes, and I will just drive uh, 40 minutes today. Yesterday and this morning I drive 1 hour 20. It was long, I'm a little bit tired, and uh, I, I want that my colleague drive more than me today because we have to drive uh, for pleasure too. But it's bad news for the 98 sister car. After the final driver change, the team couldn't start the car again. Mark Vive was pushed back into the garage. It's tight between the two P2 Genetas. The battle interrupted in turn seven when Konstantin Gugayev has a spin on just the second lap of his stint. The four and six Genetas both managed to avoid the stored lead year. In the first race, it was on this part of the track that the Speedworks number 22 broke a drive shaft. This time, it's just a driver error. Constantin manages to restart the car and rejoin. Simon Murray is out of the car. It was hot and uh, I was struggling with the brakes a little bit, um, having some pad knockoff and trying to deal with that. So it just added to the workload. Um, yeah, let's see how we go uh, in the last stint when, um, when Charlie gets, uh, gets around in the car. Neil Muston has taken over the lead. Charlie Robertson hot on his tail. The third and final checkered flag of the 3x3 event is getting close. Teams are watching the screens. They don't want to miss a single moment of action. We hope to finish, first of all, because we had a few problems this morning. But uh, now Marco is running, uh, he's running strong. Also the other two did a good job, no mistakes. So uh, we hope, uh, well, for sure we'll be on the podium. The number four is leading. But they have a 14 second penalty, which will be added onto their time after the finish. They did have a comfortable lead in the number six running second. For the last couple of laps, they're losing grip and the car is harder to drive. Brakes are locking up. The back end wants to steer. And this is putting their hopes for overall win in jeopardy. Of course, if the car doesn't get to the finish flag, they'll lose the victory. But if they can't hold a 14 second lead ahead of second place, they'll still lose that victory. Out of the last corner, the problems are worse. There's no more drive on the Ginetta and it slowly creeps across the finish line for the last race in the Hankook 3x3 hours of Dubai. Simpson number four is first to cross the line, but with no drive, Charlie needs to park his car at the pit wall. 14 seconds penalty will be added to the finish time of the number four. Coming through in second place on the road, the number six, Simpson Ginetta. Have they closed to within 14 seconds of their teammate and taken the race? 
Yes, they have. And they were battling issues of their own. We developed a terrible fuel surge. It was either a fuel surge or a misfire um, in one of the cylinders after about the fourth or fifth lap. And uh, I just I couldn't defend and I had no uh, pace in the, in the higher gears. So I was basically just re revving the, the crap out of it in second gear to, to try and get some uh, fuel in the cylinders and then take it from there. But I really had no uh, top end speed. So very, very fortunate to, to finish this way. So problems for most of the stint. How did he get so close to the race leader? I was, I was still the same through the corners. Uh, the car was lovely, well set up, nice and grippy. I was able to sort of keep it in the 58s, uh, occasional 57, and it really should have been 55 pace. So I, I'm, I'm glad the car made it, and I'm, uh, you know, I was getting pretty frustrated there too, so I'm glad I didn't lose my head and do something stupid. Third overall, and the best of the P3 cars, number 22, Speedworks Ligier. Actually, I expected I was uh, at least one second a little faster, but didn't manage to go uh, in the pace I expected. I tried not to just uh, spoil the, the balance which I had from my just fast teammates. So that when they told me that there is one car behind me for the P1, I was a little bit just nervous at the beginning. Then I tried to do uh, all my best to keep the pace. Time for the third podium ceremony. So let's have a look at the standings. Their problems for the leading number four meant the number six closed to 11 and a half seconds of its teammate across the line. The number four had the 14 lap penalty, so that means a two and a half second win for the number six. It was even closer between the leash year, just about a second between them. The Speedworks number 22 getting onto the overall podium. Let's take a look at the classes and in P2, the Geneta G57s first and second for the number six and four respectively. Speedworks number 22, Ligier, takes victory in P3, just ahead of the Graf number 44 in second. Spirit of Race number 48, Ligier, two laps down in third. In the CN1 class, not quite as close. The 98 of Kraft Racing had 83 laps completed. On 82 laps, the number 97, their sister car, was second. Third in the CN class, the AUH Motorsport Radical 177. We're happy for everyone having been here. After all, one of those teams here, one of these drivers here, is going to be the champion of the continent at the end of the season, which is going to continue in Portimao with the Hancock 3x3 hours uh, races over there in July. And uh, we're heading off to America, Austin, for the Hancock 3x3 hours quota in uh, November. Thank you very much for being here. See you next time. It's just the start of this great motorsport festival. In a few days, it's the first ever combined race for the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series and the 24-hour GT Endurance Series. So watch out for the two highlights programmes from that event. The prototypes head to Europe for the next rounds of the Championship of the Continents will be in Portugal at Portimao. Whether you're there as a spectator or a racer, you can find out more information on 24hprotoseries.com.